good evening friends so in this article uh, we will be looking at precedence constraint in SSIS so uh, this is the same uh, SSIS package that I uh, am using as I had used for the row count transformation uh, in my last uh, video session so I'm using the same SSIS package for uh, the demonstration of precedence constraint what do you mean uh, by precedence constraint in your uh, SSIS precedence constraints uh, are actually the green, uh, yellow, uh, green, red, and the blue arrows which you see uh, connecting your uh, tasks. Actually, they define the flow in terms. Uh, they define the way the package should uh, execute. Uh, I mean, proceed and execute to completion. Uh, so uh, in terms like uh, uh, what we can see here is the green arrow which is saying that on success of the first task that is the data flow task the script task should be executed only when the data flow task is uh, successful in uh, any other case the uh, script task shouldn't be executed and the package should fail there and then so such uh, is a, this is only one of the kinds of the precedence constraints that we have uh, seen in the SSIS so far. So we will be just covering uh, the basic precedence constraints in this uh, demonstration. So uh, let me just uh, run this and see what this package is doing. This package is actually counting the number of records uh, from the transaction history table and it says uh, uh, it gives you a message via the script task okay so now what we will be making in some changes here uh, to learn about the day various precedence constraints let me just pull two new script tasks and name them as right let me also put in some message very simple ones though we will simply just uh, that's it and right now just pull a pull the green arrow and connect it to your uh, following task right now just uh, if you hover your mouse and just right click on the uh, arrow you will see an edit uh, put in that edit and, and then you ha have uh, the precedence constraint editor window which we will be looking at in further details I mean uh, the first operation is of the constraint itself and uh, you also have expression we will look into that but for now it's the constraint that we are looking at and uh, on success failure and completion there are three kinds so for this we will say on failure right so you see the color has changed it has come down to uh, being a red one similarly we'll just ch uh, change this value as well and we will say completion so its color has changed to blue so what does these uh, tasks actually uh, mean to us act is on the success of the data flow task your uh, script task will execute in any other case if the data flow tasks uh, task fails your uh, failed script task will execute and in any case even if uh, anything fails or doesn't fail only if you I mean in any case if the uh, SSIS package executes completely I mean and okay if there is no issues in execution of this SSIS package it should just uh, allow this task to be uh, I mean triggered so so this task will be uh, irrespective of failures it will simply flash the message that this package was kicked off and it completed 
even if with even if with failures it's fine with it so it's it's uh, it's okay so in any case if this is successful or is failing you will have this task executing irrespective so we'll take a look at that first now let's simply run this package so if you take a look there is a message a package execution completed and then there is a message of the row count so so we have uh, two tasks which actually executed completely first was the success uh, script and the second was of the completion here uh, now let's try and fail this package so for that what I do is first I delay the validation let me just delay the validation what I am doing is I'm just delaying the validation of the data flow task by which uh, uh, the package will not be validated uh, before uh, the runtime it will it will be validated at the runtime so that's all I'm doing and then I'll be changing the connection manager so that it is not able to find the table which uh, is actually it it will be looking for so I'm just pointing it to some local database so it will not be able to find your production uh, transaction history table so the task will fail that's the plan so yeah the package failed you you seeing the the failed uh, uh, script task being executed and also the completed message package execution completed so that's uh, so that's the pa uh, precedence constraint so basically uh, when you would go for these actually uh, irrespective of uh, the data f i mean uh, irrespective of the fact package if it if it works out or not you want to send some email that yes it was triggered uh, the job was triggered the package ran but it failed for some reason so uh, in such scenarios you want your send mail task to be configured and in the completed uh, script task in other ways if you do not want completed script task to be there uh, and you want the failed ones you can actually configure your uh, mailing or your uh, other activities or whichever activity you want uh, on the field you want to uh, log it in some table you want to do anything so in such cases uh, for the task you will actually uh, put in the field uh, data or if you want to redirect actually what uh, most of the scenario is actually you want to redirect the failed records and during the data flow task into a different table in that case you would use a failed uh, precedence constraints so those were the basic precedence constraints there are very uh, them uh, there are quite a few ways actually further to this uh, by which we can uh, um, configure precedence constraints in term of a package variables and uh, we also have logical and and or operators we'll look at it in the next uh, demo session uh, friends so for now this was about the basic precedence constraints in ssis package thank you so much